Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, we're going to be doing Palm 7 8 from the Fundamentals in Chapter 7. Uh, this is from the Hebrew book, 11th, 12th edition. All right. So, I mentioned in the previous problem, 7 7, that the first thing you want to do is solve for the reactions, and then once you have the reactions, okay, you can make a cut. Um, in this, so, and I mentioned there's kind of like a shortcut to that once you get a hang of it. And that shortcut is, for an overhanging beam like this, once I make my cut, so like somewhere somewhere along this beam, okay, if I look at the right hand side, I'm going to need my reaction forces, right, because my, my answer or my results are going to depend on it. But if I look at this left hand side, okay, so if I make a cut right there, my forces only depend on you know just the given data that we have they don't depend on the reaction forces whoa what is that okay and that's what we'll do we'll just start it off like this okay this is 15 okay and then let's switch some colors and then we're gonna have our so v1 going down my moment and my n1 okay pretty soon we'll be forgetting about this n1 because we won't be using it okay now that i have this all right my job is to so i have this little portion of beam x okay and for this case you could have taken a cut anywhere you could have taken a cut here or here okay it doesn't matter all right because it's going to be a length x because you're you're making a cut after this moment and before a okay so it doesn't matter where you make the cut so then here my distributive load here we're gonna turn it into a force a resultant force here of, of the in the area underneath this okay of this uh Rectangle is going to be 2, that's the height, times the base, which is x. Okay, so that's the resultant force 2x. And then the distance from that force 2.1, okay, this is 0.1, is x over, over 2. That's kind of ugly. Okay, and now this is everything we need in order to find v1 and m1. That's my dog. All right, so now let's just sum the forces in the y direction. Okay, and we have minus 2x, all right, minus v1 equals 0. If we sum the forces in the x, and 1 is going to be 0, okay. And we have v1 is minus 2x, okay. So now, not unlike the last problem, our V1 was constant, right? Here we have a, a linearly dependent uh, shear force. Okay, so as it goes, uh, you know, as it goes throughout the beam, it keeps getting larger um, towards A. And then let's take a moment about point one. Okay, so start off with M1, right? The counterclockwise torque here. Then we have a negative 15 at, at this side, over here, so it's clockwise. And then we have a positive 2x times x over 2. And that's the moment that this force contributes, that 2x contributes. Okay. So then that leaves me with m1 equals 15 minus 2, 2 x squared perfect again take a derivative let's take the der derivative of m1 okay gives me so dm dx will give me a negative 2x okay and that matches up with the shear force so so far so good all right and then and that's all that's the only cut we're gonna need okay um so let's see We're going to plot this. 
So here is x, here's 9, here's 0. And we'll do the, this is a shear force diagram. Okay. Um, and actually, let's let's back up here. Let's do it like this. This is x. This is nine. Let's give it a okay. All right. So let's let's look at this equation here. Okay, the negative two x. So let's evaluate it at the beginning of the beam at x equals zero. If x equals zero, my my torque, uh, sorry, my shear force is zero. Okay. And since it's linear, I only need two points, right? So let's evaluate it at nine. So at nine, I have negative eighteen. So let's say this is minus eighteen. Like this. Then my shear force goes like ah. Boom. Okay. Nice. So that is my shear diagram. Okay. All right. That's the shear diagram. And now let's do the moment diagram. X. This is 9, this is 0, this is my moment diagram, okay? And now let's look what happens when we evaluate it at the beginning of the beam. So at x equals 0, it just gives me 15, right? And that 15 is just coming from the, the given 15 over here, right? So let's see, let's call this 15. Okay, that's my first point. All right, and then it's gonna vary. It's gonna be a uh, quadratic quadratic function. Okay, so let's use like maybe three points. Okay, let's use a. Uh, actually, let's use three and six. Okay, so evaluating it at three, I have fifteen minus nine. Okay, which gives me six. So this is somewhere here. Okay. Then let's evaluate it at six. Okay. So it's 15 minus 36. Okay. Which is minus 21. So that's going to get a little harder now. So minus 21. Obviously, there's not to scale. Okay. And last but not least, let's evaluate it at nine, okay? And there's a fixed support, okay, at the wall. So our, the moment there is not gonna be zero like it was in the previous problem. Uh, so 15 minus 81, so it's minus 66, somewhere like, I don't know, something crazy like this, 66, okay? And here, and then we have, parabolic graph that looks like this. Wham. Okay. And that's it. So that this is our moment diagram. Okay. And then one thing I like to do is uh, when I write these things, I say, okay, this is going to be between zero, give it the interval that it's between. So it's going to be between zero and nine. Okay. We have yet to come across one with multiple sections, so which I think it's next. All right. So I hope this makes sense. Um, you know, take it slow and we'll build on from here. All right, guys, questions, comments, just leave them down below. Take it easy, guys.